Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring down to bite-sized pieces. So today, on our uh, continuing quest to find different projects that are on the Cardano blockchain or being built on the Cardano blockchain, we take a look at Indigo Protocol. And this is a, a pretty interesting project, and it's all about synthetic assets. So real quick, let's just break down into it and uh, see exactly what this is. So Indigo is an uh, algorithmic autonomous synthetics protocol for on-chain price exposure to real-world assets built on Cardano. So to me, when, when I first saw it, uh, synthetics, uh, you know, direct physical assets, derivatives, those types of things. When I look at these, at this and being built on the blockchain, the first thing I think is, is this really needed? Because, I mean, all of us can, you know, go anywhere. Uh, not all of us. Let me, let me put that back. A lot of different people in different specific countries can go and they can trade, they can hold, they can be part of uh, futures contracts, they can short a uh, position, all on physical assets, whatever that may be, uh, not just on crypto. So for this one, when I when I first took a look at it, I'm like, why do we need this? And I think this is just one of the shortcomings uh, that I always talk about on this channel, which is I always just believe that uh, you know everybody's like me and it's very easy to, to do these things. But in reality, uh, a lot of people do not have access uh, to real world assets. So I think this could be uh, a pretty big project, uh, especially moving forward uh, for all the different things that people actually want to do and get involved, especially underserved, unbanked, people that don't have access and uh, all the different things that are out there. So let's just take a look at what the protocol is, essentially is. Um, allows the creation of fungible assets or synthetics that track the price of real world assets. Synthetics are intended to be used in uh, blockchains. Okay, so how does this all work? First of all, if we click on uh, the mint, uh, when you mint I assets uh, is decentralized and conducted by users throughout the network by opening a position and depositing collateral. And they use this example of an I Tesla or TSLA or the Tesla stock. So obviously some people don't have uh, access to that or they don't want to uh, have access to this. And they say, you know what? I just wanna do things on the blockchain for synthetic assets. And for them to actually mint this, uh, it's uh, to mint an I TSLA at $600. Let's say that's what the price is. You need a 150% collateral ratio. So they would provide $900 and receive a TSLA token. And then when you trade it, uh, you can trade that for all different types of assets on this synthetic network. And then uh, also to pool it, uh, if you provide uh, both an I asset in the uh, example I just gave right there, TSLA, and uh, you can also uh, also put in a stable coin, well then you can have become an LP or a liquidity provider uh, as a reward, and you'll earn interest in the uh, Indy token, uh, Indigo Protocol, or INDY. And then lastly, uh, the INDY token can be staked to vote on polls and required as a deposit for making new governance suggestions. And that's what I think is, is one of the big things that uh, really needs to happen, governance. So that is essentially it in a nutshell. Ah, hold on, one more thing, governance. So, oops, let me put this in. Let me expand this so it can be seen better. Governance. Using the staked new token, you're able to create and vote on proposals to expand the Indigo protocol. And this is the same types of things that we see with Cardano, what Cardano was so big uh, on. If you go into the Daedalus wallet, on the upper right-hand corner, there is a place to actually vote on different things that are coming on the pipe for Cardano. So here, same type of thing. Uh, for people that actually stake the Indy token, they can actually vote on which way the direction this project actually goes into. So, all right, sounds uh, so far so good. Here's where it gets a little choppy. How can I use Indigo? Well, currently Indigo is in development and a lot of these projects are not gonna go too far anywhere until Cardano releases their smart contracts, which uh, they've already talked about the, the three or four phase rollout uh, when Alonzo gets implemented and we're starting everything in right now in June. Today is uh, uh, June 2nd, uh, 2021. So we're looking at June, July, August, and then by September, everything is already rolled out. So actually by August, uh, they have these different color codes. Everything should be set for smart contracts. And what makes me excited about that is that uh, Cardano's actually hit their metrics. So I'm pretty excited that this actually uh, looks to be coming to fruition and people can say, well, 
you know, is anybody building on Cardano? Yes, there's a lot of projects. That's why we're talking about all of them today. So what's the key benefits? Indigo will allow anyone, 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 anywhere to tokenize an asset and trade it. And that's the big thing. Again, shortcomings on my end. I live in Texas. Uh, I'm in America, so I have no problems doing those types of things. But in other countries, this is not an option. And that's why I think it's very uh, interesting. And then uh, what are the tokenomics of Indy? And this is the thing here. Since things are so new and we're just starting to cover them, they're under research, meaning they really haven't done too much with the tokenomics. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do an interview with a couple of the guys uh, from Indigo Protocol, and uh, we'll delve into that and see where they are. But uh, just like uh, Charlie, Charlie, the uh, Cardano Oracle program uh, or on blockchain, they just put out their tokenomics today, which the other video is also listed. I'll link at the very end. You can watch that one as well. So these things are so new, but this is the this is not financial advice, this is financial opinion. But usually, if you take a look at uh, the utility, what it actually does, take a look at the team, the best time, obviously, is to get in at the very beginning. It's a lot more risky because things aren't uh, totally fleshed out and done. But in my experience, when I get into things early, and uh, I've had a couple of failures, look at uh, my 2017, 2018 portfolio, but as time has gone on, I don't need to have them all winners. I don't. All I got to do is just pick a couple of winners out of the 10 that I pick. And usually that way more than makes up for everything else. Now, I can't tell you that this is going to be a winner, but if you look at the utility, what it's actually doing, the problem that it solves and the team behind it, that's where you need to do your own research. And that's this is just one stop off uh, to your eventual uh, plethora of information you can gather on Indigo Protocol and all the ones that we talk about in Cardano. So real quick, uh, here's the team thus far. This is uh, Eric Coley. He's uh, pretty much the entrepreneur uh, type of gentleman, telecommunications. He does not software as a service, but a customer service center as a service. Uh, Dwayne, he is uh, the CIO, the Chief Information Officer, Data Analysis, Strategic, Teaching of Transformation, Code. You know what? Let's just... Cody is the developer and High is the core developer. Okay, why don't we just do this? They give us the LinkedIn information. Let's just take a look at that. So first up, who do we got? Eric. So Eric here, let's see. President and Principal Consultant, 3C Tech. Uh, entrepreneur of IQ Wired, grew clientele base, existing IQ Wired clients. And again, this is... Um, customer service as customer center as a service and then UCAAS co-founder of Indigo Labs technology telecommunications consultant so telecommunications sales role okay so there is Eric Dwayne the CIO Dwayne is more looks like he is more data analytics um, let's see his history that's where I get things also, he's one of the co-founders of Liquid, which is going to be the loan service on the Cardano network, which I think will be interesting, especially because uh, like the place I take loans out in Celsius, they don't do that with Cardano. So this could be one of those things I could definitely look at. Let's see. Senior consultant, MFR consultations. This is where his <clears throat> College of the Holy Cross, lead research assistant, documented, coded, Analyze data, SPSS, and Excel. Findings and experience at the College of Holy Cross. Uh, generating additional funds. Do, 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 schedule research. Financial support. So Dwayne here, information, analytics, and it looks like uh, some type of also funding, raising funding. So you need a couple of business people. That's great. What about the web developer? This is Cody. I'm going to see Buttes. Oh, maybe it's Buttes. Maybe it's Butts. I don't know. And uh, let's see, web developer, development operation, web and network solutions, support and maintain web-based applications, uh, intertertially driven functionality change requests for 10. Uh, all right. My her care center. So do, let's see, Cody here, web develop and mobile development field. So it looks like he's gonna be responsible for this website and also for any kind of uh, web apps. And this is the big one, hi, Wen Quang. I think I nailed that, that name. If we click on his LinkedIn, profile not available. 
So maybe they need to update that, and uh, that's what it is. It's probably just a glitch, but I'd like to know. I know that they're going to talk about uh, hay in a little bit, or hi, and uh, what his experiences are. So great. Here's the roadmap, and look, we are so early. It's just June 2nd today. So in April, here's the roadmap. Creation of smart contracts, initial security, May, Catalyst Fund, safe proposal, Plutus contract demo, June, they're just about to deploy the test net, getting bug fixes. And then all the way in August, Indigo Protocol mainnet launch, which is pretty fast if you think about it. I mean, you go from a test net in June 2021, in two months, uh, get a mainnet launch. Again, we'll see what all goes. So really what I want to do now is just kind of jump into, we're going to have uh, Eric and Dwayne explain the information that I couldn't explain well enough and just answer some questions and just go from there. So let's jump into this interview. All right, everybody. So we just uh, talked about what uh, Indigo Labs is, what they're trying to do. So to answer some of the questions, I brought uh, two of the people that could answer the best questions, uh, Eric Coley and Dwayne Cameron. So gentlemen, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Hey, no problem. So yeah, this is an interesting, it's an interesting concept about uh, synthetic assets. And then for me, for... This is one of the, one of the problems that I always have. I always kind of look at it from you know my perspective in the United States as opposed to being out there. Because right now, if I wanted to get into any kind of assets, I can go to a number of different places. But uh, globally, that's not the case. So can you talk to you a little bit about that, about what you guys are trying to accomplish here? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. You know, you can go to Robinhood and some of these other exchanges that offer fractionalized. Um, you know, assets and the ability to even transfer them at some places. Um, what we're doing that's a little different is, first of all, in a decentralized way, uh, offering exposure to these assets um, hasn't really been done at scale in the U.S. or otherwise. Um, you could argue that people in the U.S. and traders here don't really need that service as much as a global citizen does. Um, but if you're trying to get exposure to an asset that's, say, trading on the Chinese stock markets like Alibaba, for example, you can't really do that as easily um, using Robinhood or a normal centralized exchange in America. Um, we also see like FTX and Binance and other exchanges that have centralized versions of synthetic asset offerings where you can come along and trade um, assets on their platform only, so not transferable. Um, and these are centralized, you know, fully custodian versions of synthetic assets. What Indigo is trying to do is say, we can take this into a decentralized version using the Cardano blockchain, using a set of smart contracts and oracles. Makes a lot of sense. And then, I mean, for me, again, like when I look at these different types of things, I'm like, you know, why do we need it? But then we have to think globally and the market out there, I'm sure when you guys were, you know, building this and had the concepts and the ideas, you probably looked around and go, you know what? There is a huge, massive opportunity out there. We should probably take a look a little bit harder into this. So talk to us a little bit about like what you were looking at just kind of uh, globally about what was happening. Yeah, happy to. I mean, I think, you know, that was really an equality factor, um, opening up, uh, you know, access to a synthetic version of that price action um, for anyone, anywhere, anytime. So that was really what we're looking at is the market, uh, rather than sticking to one small sector and uh, piece of the market, this really opens up to everyone everywhere. So. Yeah, and it's trying to squeeze uh, uh, water from a stone. So just kind of open up <laughs> yeah. everything else out there. Sure. And then the interesting thing to, to us here uh, at Dan Clips is the Cardano connection because, you know, it is great. And this is how, how I kind of see things. I mean, we had everything being built on Ethereum in 2017, the ICO crazy days. Yeah. And then we kind of got a lot of congested and then we kind of moved to different chains. The, the recent one was uh, Binance Smart Chain. And that kind of gets topped out. And if you're talking about centralized versus decentralized. I don't want to get into that debate. However, moving forward, I think with smart contracts coming forward in August with the with uh, the, the Alonzo integration, I think this is the time to shine for Cardano and the projects being built on Cardano. But the the, the question I have, uh, I guess for you guys is, why did you shift into, into Cardano, into this method, as opposed to going someplace else? Yeah, there's a lot, I think that from a technical standpoint, you get with Cardano, there's um, the resource determinism with the way that fees are done on the blockchain. There's um, a deterministic approach to how they even introduce the smart contracts and using a language like Haskell, which is on the functional side, right. compared to using something like, you know, Ethereum Solidity, which is much more imperative, um, kind of 
you know, closer to a mainstream programming language. Um, even the way Cardano does accounting, extending Bitcoin's accounting model with the UTXO system instead of using um, just the you know basic Ethereum accounts model that most of these third gen blockchains that you you know think about, including Binance Smart Chain, use today. Um, th there's a lot of um, predictability, determinism, um, speed, um, transaction security in terms of you know this transaction will be executed and successfully passed on chain um, based on the way that Cardano's um, architecture and system is being rolled out and built. So I think that those are all like very hard reasons for someone to build you know in and on Cardano. Um, the community is another aspect of that and it's huge the the global nature of building in cardano yeah. and the folks you have access to from the sake pool operators um to the end users to the catalyst community so there's there's many different um kind of social and technical aspects of why we decided to go with the cardano route that i think make a lot of sense at this time yeah and i think to expand on that too philosophically it's like who's our who's the fearless leader of, of cardano it's charles hoskinson yeah. Uh, he, he's driven to change and impact the world for a better. Uh, that was one of my personal reasons as to say, okay, this is why I want to have, um, you know, uh, per, you know, really participate in uh, that, that mission uh, with Cardano. So. Yeah. And I, I mean, you can see it, Charles, he's, he's an interesting guy, right? I mean, right. who do you, yeah. who, who do you want to fight? really what it comes down to. And it's, it's one of those guys who's like a little bit more aggressive. And to me, like we were talking beforehand, I kind of see it as like uh, Charles Hoskinson and, and Vitalik Buterin are kind of like the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates today. And if you have sure. these, these guys coming about, I think it's going to push things to, to greater heights, but uh, yeah. you know, we'll only see. And then to talk to the thing about the community, is there, besides the XRP army, <laughs> is there any other uh, community out there that is more passionate than uh, Cardano? It seems like there's a lot of people who really want this to happen. Yeah, there's a ton. I mean, you just look at the on-chain statistics of staked addresses and wallet users. There's over, you know, over 600K almost at that number, over 100 or 1 million wallets wow. actually created yeah. on Cardano. You're saying right. this is a massive user-based system. This is um, a system that's scaling at an impressive pace. Um, came out in late 2017 and now you have over 1 million addresses. Like this is Huge. something that's only going to grow and scale into the future. We know it's going to compete with the Ethereum and any other programmable yeah. blockchain that gets up into the top 10. So it's, it's really a matter of, um, you know, sticking with the community that actually puts resource, um, you know, research first and the agenda that we've built around saying, Hey, this project isn't going to just roll out and, in a, you know, move fast and break things approach. And I'm not saying Ethereum has done that, but it's kind of like, you know, that's the approach that Silicon Valley rewards. That's kind of what we've seen happen so far in the DeFi space. The Cardano community, by and large, has said, "Let's take this, you know, um, very first principles approach to building a blockchain. Let's build this thing in a systematic way that scales things out um, at the pri at the right time when things are ready." When you look at Shelly last year and staking on mainnet, people thought that that was going to take, you know, much longer than it actually did. We're we still just beat Ethereum ETH 2.0 to staking by an entire year, basically, yeah. um, even with that slow and steady research first approach. So it actually it works in theory and in practice. And we kind of have seen that in Cardano now. Um, to me, that's reason to you know, continue trusting the process, continue trusting the approach. And you just see the community, like I said, scaling around that. And the pace of growth is, it speaks for itself, really. Really tight knit community. I mean, look, I'll give you a really good example. This week, I don't know if you're familiar with a, a YouTuber, Crypto Crow, huge Cardano bull. Yeah. Um, YouTube had some algorithm, some AI algorithm take his channel offline. No reasons why, it was just a, an algorithm issue. More than likely, it's the speculation, right? But the whole Cardano community, including Indigo Protocol, we all got behind an initiative um, to get YouTube to, to re-implement uh, his channel, and that happened. Maybe that will happen in other places, but it's a really good example of really a tight-knit community. Um, every community is going to have their bad eggs, but I think as a whole, you're really looking at a um, a really tight knit one in Cardano, so and the whole yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, and even like I, I know when I saw that, uh, mm -hmm. I even I even put a tweet tweet out to at uh, YouTube creators, then I, I right. tagged a bunch of other ones. I go, hey, Jason here has another problem. Let's try. It. Let's see if we can get him reinstated. Right. I think I think it took like two days or something like that, which is before like you know th this wouldn't happen because these things happen. Uh, YouTube yeah. is YouTube, the uh, almighty overlords. Anyhow, sure. yeah. So. Yeah. 
So, so we can talk about that. This is, these are the positive things. Let's dig down a little bit more and talk about the tokenomics. I know this is a, a brand, this is a very new project. It's uh, very ambitious, but on the website, it talks about tokenomics and says, we're exploring that. Let's mm -hmm. break it down. What do you have? Yeah, so generally the way these protocols work, um, there's a set of users that use a synthetic asset protocol. There's minters who come along actually open the collateralized debt position and mint the asset. Um, they take that to a DEX and they can provide liquidity there as an LP. So example, like I take my tokens to Uniswap today and I become an LP, I mint my LP tokens. The way to actually earn the Indie governance token in our system is to take those LP tokens and stake them in our protocol. Um, you earn the Indie token, you can use that and stake it and use governance processes, introduce proposals, vote on them. Um, all based on and tied to the Indie token itself. Um, in terms of the tokenomic breakdown, like the actual um, percentages that we're allocating to these things, yes. like Eric you know, mentioned before this, we have some things internally that we've kind of settled on and um, we feel very comfortable with moving forward. We haven't yet made those public, but I definitely think it's uh, in short order here to kind of get some of those things out there into the public and release those. Um, but yeah, Eric, if you want to, you know, expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our plan, our, our plan as a team, what we've decided on and what we've given uh, as information to our community so far and our followers is that we're going to package everything up in a real nice, pretty package uh, and, and submit to uh, the Project Catalyst Fund 6 uh, as that opens up. So um, we think that would be a great um, source for everybody to uh, find everything uh, at once with regards to our tokenomics, distribution schedule, uh, open sourcing our code at that time. So um, rather than little bits and pieces here and there and breadcrumbs, um, that's our plan is to give everything all at once and a beautiful proposal uh, in, in the Catalyst Fund 6 uh, process. So. Yeah, it's all about it's all about the launch, getting things together, pushing it out sure. and making sure it's right. I know you guys are looking at a mainnet launch, I think in August. Well, you know, we will mainnet when uh, Alonzo <laughs> so <laughs> as of as of today's update on Cardano 360, it sounds like uh, Alonzo's actual mainnet mm -hmm. uh, is going to be September. Yeah. So if that's a, and that's not surprising, right? I mean, if it was going to be mid August, a couple weeks later, a few weeks later into September, we're prepared for that. So. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good plan. So we are at the starting the starting point. So what we'll try to do here is uh, we'll push the video out. We'll talk to the people. And then as time goes on, I'd like to have you guys back just to give sure. us some updates about what is exactly happening and how we've progressed. So uh, Eric, Dwayne, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. This is great. Thanks. Right. Take care. Bye. Okay, so I hope that helped. Uh, this is just one more project being built on the Cardano blockchain. It looks to be a feasible project. I think these are just the initial stages. And of course, we'll have uh, all these guys back, uh, Eric, Dwayne, maybe Cody and Hi on, just to uh, see where things are going. But again, this is just to give you a general overview of the advancements that are going on throughout um, digital assets and cryptocurrencies and for this series what's being built on cardano so if you found value in this video give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing other things we talk about uh are time sensitive enough i mean especially with everything that's going on with indigo as far as like their test net and their main net so probably a good idea to learn about these things early before you hear about it explode over on coin gecko anyhow that's it for today thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one